Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to build a rag based application which I named it Knowledge Assistant. But the name itself doesn't really matter that much and you can change it to whatever you want. So I assume that you're already familiar with the core idea behind rag. And first uh, we will go over theories and discuss about uh, two main uh, rag techniques and that are embedding systems and turn based systems. So if you're already familiar with those two, uh, feel free to skip this uh, theory part entirely and go for the coding section. So let's begin. What are embeddings? At a high level, embeddings are a way to convert text into numbers, but not just any numbers. These numbers or vectors represent the meaning of words and sentences in a way that allows a computer to understand uh, relationships between them. Imagine you have the words like Tekken and Mortal Kombat. A good embedding model would place these two words close together in a multi-dimensional space because they share similar meanings and they're both video games in fighting genre. Likewise, words like angel and devil would also be nearby, while something unrelated like banana would be far away. So instead of comparing words letter by letter, embeddings allow us to compare their meanings mathematically. Let's break down how embeddings work in a retrieval augmented generation rack system using this diagram that I took from uh, the AI engineering book. The process starts with external memory, which can be documents, tables, chat history, or any structured and unstructured data. Since these documents are usually large, we first need to process and index them before retrieval. Before we can search for relevant documents, we need to prepare them. This is done in two steps. The system splits large documents into smaller chunks so they can be processed efficiently. This ensures that we retrieve only the most relevant pieces of information instead of entire documents. Once they are split, each chunk is converted into an embedding, which is a numerical vector that captures the meaning of the text. These embeddings are stored in a, in a vector database, uh, which allows for fast similarity search when we need to retrieve relevant information. And one example is FAISS, uh, which we will use in the project. At this stage, our system has indexed the document, uh, meaning it's ready to search when a user asks a question. Now, when a user submits a query, the query is also converted into an embedding using the same embedding model. This query embedding is sent to the retriever, which searches the vector database to find the most relevant text chunks based on the similarity. The retriever fetches the best matching text chunks and sends them to the next step. At this point, the system has found context-relevant documents based on the user's query. Then, the retrieved documents are passed to the generative model like GPT-4 or another LLM, and the model uses the retrieve context to generate a highly accurate and relevant response instead of guessing uh, the answer from its own training data. Finally, the response is returned to the user completing the retrieval augmented generation process. Now that we have covered embedding-based retrieval, let's talk about the term-based approach which plays an equally important role in our hybrid rack system. While embeddings help us understand meaning, they don't always prioritize exact uh, keyboard matches. That's where uh, BM25 comes in. Now, what is turn-based retrieval? Unlike embeddings, which represent text as vectors, turn-based retrievals, methods like uh, BM25, work more like a search engine, ranking documents based on the words they contain. BM25 stands for Best Matching 25 and is a ranking function that scores how relevant a document is based on two key factors. One is term frequency, which says how often a keyword appears in a document. So like if a document mentions uh, heart disease many times, BM25 considers that more relevant to a search for heart disease. And the second one is inverse document frequency, which says how rare or unique a keyword is across documents. So a common word like the 
is in almost every document, so it's not uh, useful for ranking. But a medical term like arrhythmia appears less frequently, making it more important uh, when ranking search results. BM25 balances these factors to ensure that the most relevant documents appear first uh, in a search. Now, in our case, when a user submits uh, a query, BM25 searches for documents that contain those exact words and uh, ranks them based on term relevance. It does prioritize documents where the keyword appears frequently, but also considers the uniqueness uh, of the term. The top ranked documents are retrieved and passed to the language model uh, for generating the final response. This is different from embeddings which uh, find contextually uh, similar words, even if they don't exactly match the query. Okay, let's have a look at the coding section here. Uh, we're going to start by explaining FIISS, and as we discussed earlier, it is used to perform a semantic similarity search over document chunks. And after generating embeddings for each document chunk, this library is used to build an index that can quickly uh, find the most similar document chunks to, to a given uh, query. And it does this by computing uh, distances between uh, the query embedding and the stored embeddings. And we also use uh, Langchain's text splitter uh, to split uh, long documents into, uh, into a small and more manageable chunks. And in the script, document text is split into uh, chunks of 500 characters with an overlap of uh, 50 characters. And this uh, chunking process uh, ensures that uh, document chunks are small enough to be embedded and searched uh, efficiently. And it preserves context by including um, overlaps, uh, which helps in minimizing context loss uh, between uh, consecutive uh, chunks. Um, and at last, uh, we use a BM25 retriever, which is a classic um, retrieval model based on uh, keyword matching, and it is useful for uh, finding relevant uh, uh, documents um, based on terms in the query. Okay, as you all know, I am using OpenAI API key, and you can obtain this uh, API key uh, by checking out their website. Uh, first, you log in, and then you go to the dashboard section, and you charge your account, and then you uh, create a, an API uh, for yourself. And you can also uh, check out their available models uh, that they offer. And yeah, let's go back to the code. Um, I am using a PDF plumber to uh, load my uh, PDF document. And uh, here I'm basically saying, uh, read only the first uh, 50 pages uh, of the document. Now in this section, the text from each document is split into smaller uh, chunks of uh, 500 tokens with uh, 50 tokens of overlap using character text is splitter. And as you know, uh, this ensures that the text is split into smaller and more manageable pieces, both for retrieval and embedding. And the script here generates embeddings uh, for each text chunk using uh, OpenAI's uh, embedding model, and then uh, stores these embeddings using a, a FAISS index for fast similarity search. And um, as you know, these uh, embeddings uh, represent the semantic meaning of uh, these text chunks. And at last, uh, we built a BM25 uh, index from raw text stuff, uh, in text chunks, and uh, using BM25 uh, retriever here. And as you know, this allows keyboard-based retrieval based on uh, term frequency and um, inverse document uh, frequency. Okay, let's scroll down uh, to this section uh, right over here, yeah, okay. Now here, when a user sends a prompt, uh, the prompt itself is converted uh, to an embedding and um, using the same uh, embedding model. And the FAISS uh, index is used to uh, retrieve top K most uh, relevant uh, text chunks uh, based, on, uh, based on the given query. And uh, then we use our second retriever, uh, BM25, which uh, matches query based on uh, keyword frequency. And at last, the results from uh, both uh, ret retrieval systems are combined, and a deduplication is performed by using 
document content as a key to ensure that uh, the identical uh, content from um, both uh, retrieval systems is not uh, returned multiple times. And then the combined results are sent to the generator model and then we have our output. Okay, before we go ahead and test the project, first I want to use uh, the embedding system only on both uh, GPT 4.5 and 01 reasoning model and then uh, we will combine it uh, with uh, the term-based uh, system. All right, welcome back everybody. Now it's time to use a Streamlit, which is a powerful Python library that allows us to run web applications seamlessly. For the sake of demonstration, I have already uploaded a PDF document in the code, and this document explores the potential of AI models in the medical field. Uh, but in a real-world scenario, people would use their own uh, PDF files, and the app processes the document uh, by extracting text and uh, converting them into a searchable format using embeddings. As the title of this video suggests, first uh, we will use GPT-4.5, OpenAI's latest model, and then uh, we will use O1 uh, reasoning model. Okay, uh, let's see how this rag-based application processes, processes a document and retrieves uh, relevant answers uh, based on uh, user queries. Since the document uh, is already uploaded, uh, let's move to the next step, uh, asking a question. All right, as you can see, this is the document that was released uh, in September 2024. And I'm going to scroll down to page 10. Uh, okay, that's it. Table 8. Table 8 uh, represents the accuracy of models on the multilingual task uh, using this uh, benchmark. So I'm going to pick this one as a sample and ask a relevant question and see how the model can uh, respond to it. Show me the accuracy of uh, various models on uh, multilingual uh, tasks. I will wait a couple of seconds. Waiting. Waiting more. Okay, let's review the generated response. Uh, it was able to extract table eight, and I guess the values are correct, right? All right, English uh, 76.4, 80.2 on Chinese. Yeah, the values are correct. Okay. Uh, key observations. Uh, the O1 model outperforms all other models by a significant margin on average multilingual benchmarks. Uh, GPT-4 and especially GPT-3.5 uh, fall notably short of O1's accuracy across uh, multilingual tasks. Okay. And AI hospital medical scenario. What is this? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Um, GPT 4.5 uh, did a little bit better than I expected, but uh, it is a still a disappointment <laughs> in my opinion because uh, I didn't ask for this information. You know, all I needed uh, was this table and the key observations here. So. I'm not sure if this is a part of the article or our document, uh, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't ask for uh, this information that it generated here. All right, uh, now let's use OpenAI's O1 reasoning model and so let's see how well uh, can that model perform on this task. Okay, I asked the same question uh, using OpenAI's O1 reasoning model and let's check out uh, the answer. Okay, uh, it was able to extract the table with its respective uh, accuracies correctly again. And um, let's check out the key observations. Uh, O1 achieves the highest average accuracy of 85.2% uh, across all languages, uh, exhibits exceptional performance in French and Spanish uh, with accuracies over 95%. That's a cool detail. And yeah, it performed uh, above 95% on uh, both languages, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
Let's check out the conclusion. Uh, the O1 model demonstrates superior multilingual capabilities on, uh, on the XMED bench uh, benchmark compared to GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 and uh, Meditron uh, 70 uh, billion parameters. Okay, um, the response generated was remarkably precise and it pr pulled only the relevant information directly uh, from the document without any extra details. In contrast, while well, GPT-4.5 uh, delivered the, the correct response too, but you know it included additional uh, unrelated information that diluted the focus uh, of the response here. All right, as promised, now it's time to use our second retriever, BM25, and combine it with uh, the embedding system uh, to see if we can uh, boost the performance of our rag system. Uh, all right, let's go back to the article. Um, all right, there's a question here which says, a two-month-old infant with a one-month of history of uh, generalized persistent blistering rash, and uh, blah, 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 and there are some available options, and uh, the correct one is uh, option C. And as you know, the primary focus of this paper was to compare uh, the performance of uh, different large language models in a uh, medical field. And as you can see, uh, despite picking the right choice, uh, O1 also explained the symptoms, and uh, I guess that's the power of uh, reasoning. Uh, so I expect the model to retrieve both question and uh, available options. All right, uh, let's go back to the app. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question related uh, to that piece of text. Uh, document. Um, mentioned something about a two-month-old infant. What was the question and the available options? Um, yeah. So let's wait. Um, I'm using GPT 4.5 uh, right now. All right, now let's check out the results. Um, it was able to extract the same exact question. Um, the available answer options were A, B, C, and D. Um, that's amazing. Uh, we were able to enhance the performance of our rack system uh, by adding a simple turn-based uh, retrieval. And we also uh, didn't receive any further unrelated uh, information uh, compared to the previous prompt. And one potential reason could be the fact that embeddings are great for uh, capturing meaning, but they don't always uh, receive the most uh, precise results. And uh, that's because embeddings work by uh, finding words that are semantically related, uh, meaning they retrieve text that is uh, conceptually uh, similar. Uh, even if the exact word don't doesn't match here. And uh, yeah, we are about to wrap this video up. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I used OpenAI models because I still believe uh, they offer the best services in the terms of LLM, but you're welcome to use any other uh, open source models and compare the results. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And if you have any questions, uh, use the comment section down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe the channel uh, for more videos. And uh, thank you all for watching.